Hey guys, I got this mail yesterday and it was a pleasant surprise for me to see such a big number in views as well as in watch minutes. So without your support it was impossible for me to reach such a big number in a short period of time. So I will be grateful for such a great support lended to me. And this is a new logo designed by one of our viewers, Ms. Swati. Thanks for her great work. And I once again thanks everyone who have supported me to reach this level. And I will be doing my best in the forthcoming videos. So keep on supporting me. Thanks a lot once again. And this video will be the continuation of the previous one. That is the part 2 of the section C. That is in the JAM 2020 question paper. So the first question is that in an oceanic crust, a 4 million annum old oceanic crust lies 40 km away from the ridge axis. The average velocity of the oceanic lithosphere is dash. So they had given the distance from mid oceanic ridge that is 40 km and the age of the rock that is 4 million annums. And they had asked for the average rate of spreading that is the average velocity of the movement of the oceanic lithosphere. So this is a mid oceanic ridge setup where a new oceanic crust forms here and that will move away from this point at certain speed. So we should understand the relation between the distance, the age and the spreading rate. And the relation is that the distance from the mid oceanic ridge is equal to the spreading rate and the age. So if the spreading rate is 1 meter per day and if a rock of age is 10 is, uh, uh, 10 years is lying away so the distance will be 10 meters that will be the relationship but we don't know the spreading rate so we will keep it as a then the equation will be 40 kilometers is equal to a into 4 million annums but the question they are asked but in question they are asked the results would be in centimeter per, per year right so we have to convert the kilometer into centimeter and million annum into years so the 40 kilometer will become 40 lakh centimeters and 4 million annum will become 40 lakhs years, right? So by substituting and cross multiplying, what we get is the spreading rate that is 1 centimeter per year. So the average velocity of the lithosphere is 1 centimeter per year. The next question is that they had given few of the aquifer parameters and they had asked for the hydraulic conductivity. What they had given is the cross section area that is A is equal to 1000 meter square and the hydraulic gradient that is dq by dt which doesn't have any unit that is 0 0.01 and the rate of flow of water that is 10 meter cube per second and they asked for the hydraulic conductivity. There is a rule a law which connects all these four and that we call it as Darcy's law where q is equal to ka dq by dt by substituting the values, what we get is k is equal to 10 by 0 0.01. So by dividing what we get the hydraulic conductivity that is k is equal to 1 meter per second. So if we know the Darcy's law, we can solve this question, right? And the next question is that they had given a diagonal fault and they had given the net slip that is of 100 meter and we have to resolve it into strike slip and dip slip and we have to mention the value of strike slip okay so in a diagonal fault we know that there will be both the components that is strike slip and dip slip as in diagonal fault the displacement forms at right angle triangle so we can use the trigonometric functions to solve this and if you have any doubt in this please check my youtube video on false which i will give you the link in description so they had given the net slip that is 100 meter and the dip of the fault that is 30 degree. So we have to resolve the, the net slip into strike slip and dip slip components. And if you see the figure that is the dip slip and this is the strike slip, strike slip. And you know the relation between the strike and the dip is 90 degree. So that will form a right angle triangle. So we can keep this SI as adjacent side and the net slip as hypotenuse. And we know in cos theta is equal to adjacent by hypotenuse. Therefore, cos 30 will be equal to S by 100 meter. And we know cos 30 is root 3 by 2. So, therefore, S will be equal to 173.21 by 2. 
so s will be 86.6 that is the strike slip is equal to 86.6 meter so if you know trigonometry you can solve this that is not a big deal right and the next question they had given a map in which they had given a borehole point and they are going to drill a hole in that point and we have to find out at what depth the coal seam will appear so when there is a map you have to solve it by drawing the strike and you know what is a strike a strike is a elevation of a inclined formation from the mean sea level and the contour is the elevation of the surface from the mean sea level right so if you draw the strike this will be the first strike for the coal seam and the value of the strike will be 300 meter because the 300 meter contour cut this outcrop of coal seam so this will be the 300 meter strike and the next strike will be this and the value will be 400 meter and you know what the borehole point exactly lies over the strike direction and the borehole points elevation is 500 meter the point of elevation is 500 meter and at that point the strike of the coal seam passes is 400 meter therefore the difference is 100 meter so what we get in the borehole is the coal seam depth will be 100 meters so if you know the concept of strike and dip you can solve it very easily and the next question is also a geological map in which they are given a fault and you have to find out the vertical throw of the fault the first thing is that if you can trace a single outcrop on both the side of the fault plane we can simply measure the throw say for example let this be the first strike and this strike cuts the bed a and b in this point and this strike value will be 500 for this side in the same strike the same outcrop a b is cut through at this point and this contour value is 400 therefore the strike will be 400 meter from this itself you can find out that this side is the up thrown side and this side is the down thrown side and the difference is 500 minus 400 is equal to 100 therefore the amount of throw is 100 meter so these questions are quite easier if you can solve the map you can get marks very easily through this type of questions and there will be definitely one or two questions in every exam even in gate, sorry, gate jam or all other things or even net, net also and this is a question which is asked by one of our viewer that is Mr. Arya Kannan and he shows a geological map that shows a contact between sandstone and limestone and they are drawn two different direct lines in two different direction and we have to find out the dip in both the direction and we have to find out the difference in that okay so a b will be the true dip direction because it is perpendicular to the strike direction and a c will be the apparent dip direction because it is not perpendicular to the strike direction is that clear so you know one thing the answer in the answer the a b will be higher than the ac because true dip will be always higher than the apparent dip that is the main rule right you remember so the formula for finding out the dip is equal to tan theta is equal to strike interval by horizontal equivalent into scale but in this map they are not given the scale but they had given the horizontal equivalent in the surface wall value itself that is 200 meters so we don't need scale we can use this value as horizontal equivalent directly so what they had given is for a b strike interval is 100 meter or horizontal equivalent is 200 meter and for a c strike interval is 100 meter and horizontal equivalent is 300 meter and if you substitute the value we will get tan theta is equal to 100 by 200 theta will be tan inverse of 0 0.5 so theta will be 26.57 degrees and for ac if you do the same thing we will get the dip that is 18.26 so now itself you can cross check that ab's dip is 26.57 which is higher than the ac dip that is 18.26 so the true dip is always more than the apparent dip and what they had asked is they were asked for the difference so we have to sub subtract the values and what we get is 8.31 so answer the difference in dip is 8.31 degrees is that clear so if you have still any doubts you can or you want to solve such a big such a questions just feel free to mention it in the comments or you can also mail me the question 
and I am interested to support the students who are preparing for the JAM and NET examination through free online classes. If anybody is interested, just fill the form which I had given in the description. When the minimum number of students got registered, the class will begin. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you feel that this will be useful for someone else, consider sharing. And if you want to see such a video regularly, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.